at this couch, I can only imagine how many stories have been told on here, how many memories. Speaking of stories and memories, did you know that Ellen White was only in Australia for nine years? Wow, she accomplished so much. Close your eyes. Or don't. Let me actually just portray it for you. I want you to think. Could you see yourself going for a stroll with Elder W.C. White and his wife May through the orchards at Sunnyside? Perhaps they're looking for the next ripe peach, or maybe it's a nectarine. Oh, I think I see Mabel hiding in the trees. Their family and how their family came to be is such a special story. Here's Marion, busy at work as always, compiling manuscript after manuscript, putting together the book we now know as The Desire of Ages. Oh my, I think Iram's lost something. Or maybe someone. I bet you it's his wife, Christy. The story of how they came to Sunnyside is such a powerful story. God works in mysterious ways. So, has your curiosity been piqued? Do you want to learn more and hear more stories? If so, then I want to invite you to come here this afternoon at 2 p.m. where we're going to journey back in time to check out the next great appointment. This time, right here, Town Under. So we welcome and we're glad to see all of you here at the University Church. It is an honor and a privilege to have Avondale School here today. Can we give them a hand, everyone? And I want to welcome up Oscar and Ella Jean, and they're going to take our program from here. Thank you, guys. Good morning, everyone. My name is Oscar, and I would like to welcome you to University Church this morning. Hello, everyone. My name is Ella, and on behalf of Avondale School, I would like to thank University Church for inviting us to worship with you all this morning. Ella and I are the primary school captains of Avondale School, and we will also be your hosts for this morning. At Avondale School, we are lucky to have some wonderful opportunities to worship with a variety of churches in our local community. And we are especially grateful for the support that Uni Church provides for our school in many ways. You might see some familiar faces involved in our choir and various ensembles. In our primary school, we have a ukulele and guitar ensemble called the Avondale Strummers. String ensembles, the primary choir, a junior band, and our worship bands that play for our chapel ensembles. We also have a variety of ensembles in our high school, such as our concert band, vocal ensemble, and our chapel worship bands. There's always something musical happening at our school, and we're so excited to share some of that with you all today. Please bow your heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that we can all be here to worship you. Please be with the speaker and the message that they will be sharing with us today. Please be with everyone who is going through a hard time, and thank you that we can embrace our talents with you today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, we can have this day of rest, and we thank you that we can come together as a big church family. We thank you for this opportunity that Avondale has to share our talents with the rest of the church. We pray in your heavenly name. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Thank you for all joining us today. We are so excited to come and worship with you guys. So could you please stand up and sing with us our first song, Sing Wherever I Go. song cast your burdens and please feel free to join in with the actions thank you
sing our last song, Goodness of God.
Today's scripture reading is from Psalm 119, verse 105 to 112. It reads, Your word is a lamp, a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. I promise it once and I'll promise it again. I will obey your righteous re regulations. I have suffered much, O Lord. Restore my life again as you promised. Lord, accept my offering of praise and teach me your regulations. My life constantly hangs in the balance, but I will not stop obeying your instructions. The wicked have set traps, have set their traps for me, but I will not turn from your commandments. Your laws are my treasure. They are my heart's delight. I am determined to keep your decrees to the very end. Every single week, our church takes up an offering for different ministries and projects. Everyone is welcome to give to the offering. However, if you are visiting today, please do not feel obliged. Today's offering is for the local church ministries here at Uni Church. Can the people doing the offering please come up?
So at this point, I am a very, very proud head of primary school. Um, could you do me a favor in regards to the program that Shelley, Natasha, and Kylie run um, with amazing staff that support? Can you just give them a round of applause? Thank you. As well as our amazing students and all the hard work and elements they've brought to worship today, do you mind giving them a round of applause as well? Thank you. Thanks, guys. Amazing. My name's Stuart Clark. I'm the head of primary at Avondale School. Um, on behalf of the senior leadership, um, Deb Cooper is the principal of our school, who's here as well today, as well as Hayley Ferris, the head of secondary school, as well as other members of senior leadership. We want to thank you so much for your support of the school. Um, and if um, you would like to be part of our school, you have a young one and you'd like them to join our school, and there's maybe any form of barrier for that, please speak with us because we'd love to minister and share the gospel with your child. Um, we love education, we love the excellence of education, but above all, we love Jesus. And we want to share Jesus uh, with the students and with those that we possibly can. So please come and have a chat with us if, if, if you need to. Um, that would be amazing. Let me just start with a word of prayer. Lord, I thank you so much for the amazing, beautiful music that we've just been listening to. I thank you that it is worship, moments of reflection, and moments for us to just be able to see you. So we thank you, Father. And we also ask right now that as we contemplate your word, that we always may be challenged to be something more. So we thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, the king had gone, and they had forgotten who Joseph was. He had passed, so then the Hebrew people were placed into slavery. I was um, in Tokyo. Now, Tokyo is an amazing place. In fact, Tokyo, for many things it has to offer, has the highest amount of Michelin star restaurants. Oh yes, not Paris, Tokyo has the highest number of Michelin star restaurants. So when you're there and you're trying to experience the world, you say to yourself, I want to go to one of these restaurants. So I'm looking down and I'm trying to work out which one to go to. Made out that was in paper, it's actually online. There you go, that's better. Uh, and I'm looking to see which one to go to. And of course, you're going to choose the best one because if you're going to do it and you're going to bankrupt yourself, you might as well do it properly. So chose the best one, Suzanne, which is actually French cuisine in Tokyo, but number one rated, cooked by an English chef. Um, but that is the way it goes. And so you enter into this place, and it's beautiful, and it's lavish, and it's all beautifully white, and, and you sit down at the chair, the chair comes out, and you sit down, and everything's placed on you, and you're, you're very happy in this moment. Um, you know how much it's going to cost you already, so you're a little bit upset, but you're really committed to that part. So you're sat there, and they bring out all the little bits, and everything's very tiny. Um, it's like they look at it and go, well, that's how much that's worth. Let's divide it by 25, and then serve it to the people. And they bring out the tiny little thing, and, and you sit down, and you taste it, and oh, oh, what a moment. Have you ever eaten food where you want to weep? You know, like tears start running down your eyes, and you suddenly become a believer in incredibly expensive food. And I'm sat there, just like, oh, eating, just serving after serving, going, this is all I thought I should experience in life. This is that moment. Well done, Suzanne. Well done. So each of these plates are coming out. And one is placed in front of me. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, oh, that looks very interesting. And um, I may attend KFC. So I'm just putting that out there before I explain this. And I'm cutting into this, uh, this meat, and I'm just like, ooh, lovely chicken. Why is this chicken so dark, though? And I'm cutting it. I'm placing it in my mouth. I'm like, oh, that tastes a bit different. I call over the waiter. Excuse me, waiter. Because now I'm feeling really happy about myself. Excuse me, waiter. But I'm spending a lot of money here, so over here. Uh, and they come over, yes, sir. Um, this uh, chickeny meat, 
that's very dark. What is it? Um, because, you know, I've already filled out a form of what I don't eat and sent that through. Um, but what's this? Ah, squab. 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 I haven't heard of squab. Squab. So a few people are laughing because they know what it is. Squab. Pigeon. I had pigeon in front of me. I had paid for pigeon. I had placed pigeon in my mouth. And all these things are running to, into my brain. Ah! Um, and also, other things are running into my mind, like my childhood. Like, mummy, will I go to heaven? Um, as, I'm, as, as I've got this in my mouth. And I'm thinking, what do I do? Panic stations are going off as I'm also trying to work out whether or not it's going to come out of my mouth in this very posh place as I realize what I've just consumed. And I'm feeling really bad about this situation right here. And I am stuck, really, really stuck in some of the stuff. <gasps> what do you do in that moment? Well, I'm English, so I pretend it didn't matter. Oh, OK. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> like that. Just let it run over my head. I was just like thinking, <laughs> I'm eating. Pigeon. <laughs> and, and, and for some reason, I think they could see the distress on my face and said, it's actually been imported from France, which made it worse for an Englishman. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, that's just too far. <laughs> but it was just this moment of being completely and utterly stuck. I had no reference point what to do in that situation. I was in uncharted territory, and I was terrified. Absolutely like, oh, I have no history of this. What do I do with it? And I had literally bitten off more than I could possibly chew, and I wanted to visit a very posh toilet <laughs> in that moment. This is life. Life. Life are these moments that we find ourselves stuck in this moment and we look at it and we go, I don't know what to do next. And it happens again and again and again, where you have a nice little plan about who you are, but life has all these little twists to it. And you find yourself stuck, biting off more than you can chew, looking at it going, <gasps> what do I do in this moment? It's the human condition. It's, it's, it's situations like you might be in a work situation where you find a challenge and you actually are trying to search for the answer and you can't find it. Or your mind's wrestling with, who am I in this point? Could be relationships where you're actually stuck right there. And you're like, what do I do next? I don't know. I am challenged in this moment. It's always, who are you? at different points, and you pull on history to try and work that out. And sometimes, you don't have the history button to sort out the problem. So you get stuck. You get a little bit like, Ugh. what do I do next? We see this in school land. We see as students are growing and learning, and they get their different situations, and they're like, Ugh, what do I do in this situation? Because they're growing and learning and trying to work out how to struggle with the world and life. And so, of course, adults around them trying to guide them. But as adults, we have to sometimes process that ourselves in that moment. Man, life is tough. There is um, this amazing, amazing picture in Scripture that, of course, that's the beauty of the Bible is story after story, not about perfect people, but people actually wrestling with this very, very thing, actually wrestling with this. He kind of wakes up, just that kind of yawn. Sun just kind of breaking through the tent as he steps out and the sand's just there and he places on the sandals. He looks out at the livestock and starts to move them towards the mount. As he walks towards the mountain, he starts to push up the hill and life is good. He just sees all that he has and the view is epic. Just looking over sand and bush and trail 
and the sun is just warming his face. He looks over on his journey as all the flock follow him and each staff push pushes him higher up the mountain. And he sees there a bush and it's a flame. Now, this is not strange for him. There's many times that there are bushes of flame. But he looks at it and says, there's something different about this. So he steps towards it. And Moses looks at this bush that's a flame. And it says, God speaks to him. And in scripture, it says this. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush. Moses, Moses, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals from the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. And I'm concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them up to a land that is good and spacious. And, and now the cry of the Israelites has reached me and I have seen the way the Egyptians have been oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Moses is a very famous story. Here he's pressing up this hill and there's something about this bush burning that makes him turn and actually step towards it rather than continuing on his path. So he is on this normal journey after all of his history and then there is this moment to make a choice. I don't know about you, it doesn't need to take a bush burning, but God's voice just to speak very audibly to you to probably make you go, ah, oh, this is probably quite something, quite a moment. And God speaks to him and utters. And his response in this moment is, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He felt stuck in that moment and not prepared. Um, an example I'll give you, uh, as I saw as I come from, um, to the southern part of the hemisphere, is there's nothing like sports over this side of the world. I mean, Norm reminded me this morning that South Africa's playing England tomorrow uh, morning. That's very cruel of him, um, because I know we'll get whooped. Um, and so there is this love of sports down this side of the world. I'm thinking... You just sometimes feel ill-prepared in different situations, like in New Zealand when I was there. Just the haka. Mercy, the haka. I mean, you stand on the field, that's in front of you, happening, and you're the English rugby team seeing that occur at the beginning. What do the English have in response? I've got a video of the national English dance. Can, can you show that for us, please, Jesse? That'd be awesome. This is the... <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. Um, New Zealand has the haka. We have Morris dancing. Um, so that could be our response to that moment that occurs right there in that place. Ill-equipped for what's in front of you is an interesting feeling. I mean, it must be daunting to see that happen on that sporting field, and you're like... I've got Morris dancing right now to respond to that, but I don't want to do it. I'm really ashamed about it. Um, there is no response to it. God is calling him to do something, and he's like, who am I? I would like to suggest there are so many times that we all feel like that, that we're on this journey, on a path, sun shining on our face, Everything's good, we're going about life. And we just feel a little bit more ill-equipped to do something different. And God comes along and goes, adventure. And we go, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. I don't have the expertise for that. I would like to just keep on walking with some sheep. 
Thank you. When we're faced with the obstacles, when we're faced with things we're not expecting, I mean, that is a very small thing, but sometimes in life we all know we're stuck in a moment and we're faced with something like a family problem. We're faced with a professional problem. We're faced with loss. We're faced with just the great challenge of what it is to be a human being in a sinful world, and we're just like, oh, what do I do right now in this moment? And we just keep walking, and we just keep being. But God wants us to turn and look at him. So, we see this picture, and see, God is not... It's, it's an interesting thing, this story in the Bible, because God is trying to tell us something about it. Because though Moses is going, who am I that I would go to Pharaoh? Moses is actually a guy of experience. Um, the Abraham story before, all we know is that Abraham has this genealogy and God calls him on an adventure. But with Moses, God deliberately sets up the phrase um, and the verses for us to understand who he is. Moses, by his very nature, is a deliverer opening kind of picture here is that we have Moses see his people being um, abused by the Egyptians. So he steps in and rescues one of his own people. Delivery number one. He's um, fleeing because he has now taken the life of this Egyptian. And so now he is fleeing. And as he flees, he sits by a well. Seven young ladies come to draw water, and it doesn't say how many, but some shepherds come down, and they are stopping them from drawing the water. It says that Moses stands up and intervenes in the situation, the one against the many, against the people that aren't even his people, the Midianites, and he steps in to rescue these young ladies from these shepherds all around. His presence is such that he just stands and, and interacts with them in whatever way that the Bible's not telling us to, but they leave them alone and they can draw the water. Moses is a deliverer. He steps in when others would not. And God knows this, but Moses doesn't. Moses doesn't know this. So Moses is now living life with sheep, walking around going, cool. And God speaks to him and says, I want to challenge you to do something for me. And he says, but who am I? I've tried so many different jobs in my life, as in my amateur jobs in life. Um, One of them is to be an arbiter. Um, And what I mean by that is, if I see a tree that needs sorting out in my backyard, I think I can deal with it. So I saw this tree this this day, and I said to myself, well, I'm going to activate one of the two best phrases in in mankind. One best phrase is world peace. The other one is a trip to Bunnings. So I said to myself, trip to Bunnings. Off I went, bought a chainsaw. Loved it, because you get to buy a chainsaw. Who doesn't like buying a chainsaw? Uh, Went and bought a chainsaw, went back, looked at the tree. I'm going to sort you out, tree. That's what I said. And I went up the tree, I lashed some, some rope to the branch that I was going to chop down, that was, was causing an issue, and I began to cut the branch. Now, you know, and I know none of the, no one else would do that in this room, but you know when it's not quite going right, so you start doing interesting things to make it go right? Like you have the perfect plan of how to execute this, but you start twisting the perfect plan because it's not quite getting the right angle. So I found myself sitting on the branch and cutting it this way because I couldn't quite get the angle against the the trunk. So now I'm sitting on it with a chainsaw going, I'll get off this, you know, before the critical moment. Uh, But I've also lashed this here and I I believe in the tying power I've got right here. So I'm, I'm chainsawing away and I'm loving life. And you can imagine what happens next is you hear a little crack, you switch off the chainsaw, you hear the crack again, you look to your right, and a spider jumps on your face. (laughs) I just had a spider on my face. I nothing to do with the branch, just looked right, spider had descended probably with all the vibration, and whoop, straight in my face. 
that threw me completely off. I fell backwards, landed on my back. I was so discombobulated. I was just like, oh, like that, just stuck in that moment. Um, I was gone. Bam. Passed out. Just lying on the floor. Gone. Next thing you wake up, and you're looking up, and you can see this branch there that's been lashed up there, and I'm thinking, oh, at least that didn't fall on me, I suppose. And I'm looking at it, and then you have a feeling. You have a moment that you say to yourself, that's not too bad. And it starts to crack and crack and crack. And then the branch descends, and you're looking at it, and you're going, oh, I should have hired someone to do this job. <laughs> and it lands right next to you, but not on you, and you thank the Lord for his mercies. And you say to yourself, today was not a good day. Um, and then, when you think something is bad, you know how it always has potential to get a little bit worse? So I feel... Not one, not two, not three, not four, five, or six, or seven, but eight legs crawling across my chest, under my shirt. <laughs> because the spiders decided to join me on my journey. Um, now, I'm from England. Nothing bites you over there and kills you. Just the French. I, I, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> it's not on YouTube, is it? Oh. It's, it's, it's this kind of moment where um, you're like, ah, ah, ah. And so I'm terrified of the fact that there's this spider on me, and, 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 and I'm just like, and you just do that kind of thing, and you feel the squidge of the spider, and problem is resolved. Because I'm thinking to myself, you know what's better than being bitten by one of those Australian killing spider things? It's a dead killing spider. So squidge that thing, problem resolved. It is time and time again when we find ourselves stuck and challenged by different situations. Time and time again that the main problem is, is our experience. I'm actually quite good at chopping down trees right now because I had to do that bit first. I had to experience different things and then I'm actually not too bad with a chainsaw. Still got all my fingers, for example. It is... The experience once and then the continued that gets you somewhere. And here is Moses, not believing who he is and thinking I am stuck. But that's us. That's us. So many times we are stuck in a situation and our brains rattling to try and find the answer. But we have our lives and our history to know who God is in our lives or to know what we've done before. It's about standing in his presence and responding to him. He looks at Moses and speaks to him and challenges him. He calls him. He calls him and says to him that you are going to do this task because you've always been ready and slowly you've been demonstrating who you are. And God speaks to him and says, I am. There are a few options here, a few things to pull out. When God appears to him as a burning bush, he doesn't appear to him like in the Genesis story in regards to the tree was not one of choice with a beautiful fruit to eat. It was a burning bush because God was about to refine him. Fire, when you step close to it, gives you that warmth. You kind of find it amazing, but it warms you because you know that it can shape you into something different. And that fire wanted to get rid of the waste and focus him on something more amazing. Wanted to make him and craft him. And God wanted him to step into a new space, trusting him so he could be more. So that element we see here with this story is that God is looking to challenge him and challenge you for more. I would like to suggest that whether it's a child working out moments and learning and growing, or whether it's an adult finding themselves in tricky and unbelievably challenging situations, 
that as you walk through life and as you are challenged, look for where God is rather than keep walking forward. Turn. And it says in the Bible, God sees that you turn and he speaks to you. And God speaks to you about who he can be in your life. And you throw all these things about how you can't deal with this situation. He says, no, 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 no. I am in this situation. I am. The beginning of this whole book in Exodus, it says in Exodus chapter 1, verse 8, a new king came and forgot who Joseph was. The reason why it's so powerful to start with that is because Joseph had come into the land to give deliverance. Joseph had God walk with him and God delivered the land through Joseph. And the king had forgotten who Joseph was. But this whole story is about people forgetting who God is and that he is the great deliverer. It wasn't only the king that forgot, it was his people that forgot. Imagine if you are the person that follows God but forgets that he is in the business of delivering, that he is in the business of you turning and looking at him and him saying, I am, and bringing transformation. That he is the one that when you are struggling can do something amazing and call you onto the adventure you cannot possibly imagine. Onward with him. The reason for that piece of scripture there at the beginning is because it would be a shame for God's people, for you as an individual, for you and your journey to forget that God is the God of deliverance, the God who works in every situation to give you a voice and to give you a clear picture of who you are in every moment. The challenge, as Moses' story is, is that it doesn't mean that God leads you onto a beautiful beach where you get to sit on the sand and relax. In this story, he leads him into a desert. The sand's a bit different. But he grows him into somebody. And in the end, in Deuteronomy, Moses is making the most eloquent, beautiful speeches about who God is. What is your challenge? When you're in those moments and you're stuck, do you look to God and say, I am, I need you. We need to move onwards with him. Let's listen to some beautiful music by these amazing students.
That's beautiful, ladies. Thank you, everyone. That's amazing, amazing. Um, let us pray. Lord, I want to thank you for the beauty of hearing children's voices sing praises to you. I want to thank you that we get to just be able to be in this space and, and love, worship, and singing praises to your name. And for whatever challenges us every day, we want to ask, Father, that you just be with us in those moments. We always want to move onwards, but we want to move onwards under your power, your guidance, and with you just filled into our lives, Lord. And we thank you so much for Jesus who has set us free. And because we are free through his gift, we just seek to live every day looking to you to help us with what we struggle with, but also what we delight with, that our every moment is yours, Lord. So we thank you, Father. I want to thank you so much for the beauty of um, your schools and the ministry that we get to have in those spaces, that we get to be able to share Jesus. And we just ask a blessing upon all our schools, as well as um, every Christian school that gets the opportunity to share your name. So we thank you for that, Father. But we also ask for the challenges of this week, we give to you. And so we thank you that we've had this pause, we've heard the beauty of music, we've heard the brilliance of great um, reading of your word by students, as well as just that moment to reflect on who you are. So we thank you, Father, and this week is yours. In your name we pray, amen.